Hey guys, I'm recording this from the road, so it's not going to sound the same, but I wanted to get an episode out to you. This one's about me feeling like a huge cheater. I'm not going to explain it in the intro. Listen to the show. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, this is S. Anthony. You know what? I'm just going to get into it. You know what I want to talk about? Cheating. I'm not a cheater, but I know what it feels like. Now, what do I mean by that? I remember, how can I put this? It, it, this is kind of embarrassing, all right? But what the hell, look. Like I said, I've never cheated on a woman. I've never done that in my life. I never would do it. And the main reason is I don't want to hurt anybody. It's not my style. I don't believe in it. And I remember one time, there was one lady that was crazy about it at the time, and she thought I was cheating on her. And I saw the look on her face, and I knew at that moment... Even if the opportunity presents itself, and it's presented itself many times, even when the opportunity presents itself, it has many times. I'm just not going to do it. I could never put that look on someone's face, ever, ever, ever. And this is what I'm talking about. So it was a lady, when I was younger, I was uh, maybe about 20 years old. She was a little older than me. We had a great time together. And I wanted to do something special for her. We were having a great time. And I became friends with her friends. And it's always good when your lady's friends literally love you. They think you're the greatest thing in the world. And I was in that position, which was fantastic. Because I know the other side of it when they hate your guts because you're the new guy. And then they grow to love you later on. But in this particular case, the lady loved me. I mean, my lady's friends loved me right from the beginning. So I wanted to do something special for this particular lady. I wanted to impress her. And sometimes guys do things to impress their girlfriends when it's just the girlfriend and him alone or the wife and him alone. But it's always better to do something where, you know, where you can show how much you're crazy about her in front of her friends. Not to the point where you embarrass her. Don't do anything stupid. But you know what I'm talking about. I remember there was a lady, I, I sent some stuff to her and I made sure her friends were around to see it. And it, it was great. I wanted to do it again with this particular lady, not to copy the idea, but it's great to, to show off how much you love your lady in front of other people. So I get with her best friend. I sneak to call her best friend. And the only reason I'm calling her best friend is because I need her best friend to make sure she's at a specific place at a specific time for the specific surprise and it is going to be cool man you know how you get those guys with the tap dancing and the flowers and the confetti and all of that crap i wanted to do that i wanted to let this woman know i think she was the greatest thing since sliced bread and i wanted her friends to know to to, to see that i thought she was the greatest thing since sliced bread i wanted to do it i wanted to do it and i was going to do it but unfortunately well, fortunately, they were great friends, but unfortunately, they spend so much time together. It was very, very difficult for me to even get fleeting moments alone with her best friend, right? So as we were coordinating the surprise, when we would look at each other with secret looks like this at the time, make sure she's there. If you didn't know that the only reason we were looking at each other like that and snickering like that was the fact that we had this great surprise set up, you would think that we had been getting it on behind her back. And I saw the look on her face, but I didn't think much of it. Maybe she was a little suspicious, but I didn't think anything of it. Why? Because I'd never cheated. So, it did. so why would she be suspicious? I finally get her best friend alone. We're talking. I said, okay, make sure she's here. And I'm going to do this. And you do that. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to surprise her. And it's going to be great. You're the greatest boyfriend ever. Oh, no, I'm just trying to show her that I think she's the greatest. And someone sees me and her best friend outside having a conversation. The entire conversation was about how to do something special for her. And I don't even blame the other friend who saw us there and would look, which I guess technically we were conspiring. We were conspiring to do something nice for her. But if you're across the street and you see these two people and you know that that's the boyfriend of the girl of, of a friend and this is the other friend and they're laughing and joking and they and they they, they lean in and, and uh, they hug each other real quick and they give her a peck on the cheek, you don't think, oh no, they must be coordinated in a great surprise. Only thing you're thinking is, oh, he's coordinating. He's coordinating the crap out of her and she's coordinating the crap out of him. I hope they use condoms. That's what you're thinking and i'm not mad at that person 
but that person did get back to the girlfriend and she said oh he i can't believe he, he's never done anything like that before i'm i don't know i don't and now all of a sudden she's spending the day with her best friend and they're probably not having fun they're not having fun she's being nitpicky because she thinks there's a pers there's a possibility that i'm giving her friend the good business that i give her on a regular basis and she loves when i give her the business and quite frankly i don't blame her because well <laughs> i miss anthony <laughs> don't judge me shut up back to the story so she's with her friend and they're not having a great time they kind of nitpicky fighting what's wrong with you oh nothing nothing's wrong with me that kind of crap right she finally gets and now it's because my girlfriend at the time is mad at her best friend thinking that i'm getting it on with her she's being passive aggressive dragging her feet all these kind of things so now it's getting really really close to the time where the surprise is and they're not there yet and i'm gonna spend money on this daggone surprise <clears throat> I'm not liking this because the guy is going to come in with the surprise and do with a tap dancing and all of that crap. And my woman's not going to be here. And she fought. They get into a fight right there. Not a fist fight, but they yell at her. You ain't never. But the, the girlfriend's friend doesn't even know why she's being treated like that the girlfriend won't say why and she finally gets to there in the nick of time right the guy's supposed to be here at i forgot what time it was it was like say say four o'clock okay and they get there at 353 or some crap like that i planned on on them being there for a little while casually having conversation tee hee hee and then having the guy show up but it's not like that no so we get there and i'm going i don't know they're fighting at the time i'm telling you about the fight because i found out about it afterward okay so the girlfriend's friend brings my girlfriend in and we're sitting there and I'm looking at the body language. It's the kind of body language that you would see at a UFC fight that was closely contested when you didn't realize who was going to win the fight. You know what I mean? They just kind of look at her and she's looking at her. I mean, the only thing missing is them biting some gazelles on the buttocks because it looks like two lionesses were about to fight. Yeah. Normally, when two really, really good-looking women were going to fight, a guy would be all turned on. Yeah, fight, but that 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 that, that was not the case this time. May, may, uh, no. So what happens then? We're sitting there, and she looks at the girlfriend, and she's like, "And you, you, you I can't be you. You do. You, you two should be. Maybe you two should be standing next to each other. Maybe that's what you should be doing." And I'm looking at her like, "What?" what? And then the other friend comes in. Yeah, I saw you guys. As a bit, the ba 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 ba. I'm going. Oh, gee. and I can't explain because it's a minute before the guy comes in. I'm trying to stall, and then the guy comes in. Boom, boom, bam, 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 tap, tap dancing on the on the tile floor. <laughs> Who is? He says her name. Who is? <laughs> That's me, but we don't have time for that. Yes, you do have time. I don't have time. Trust me, just live. I was at the, and she had this look on her face, and she was just completely crushed. And I'm like, oh God, hurry up and start singing, you, you, you tap dance guy. And who's a, and he says her name. She's most beautiful woman. I don't remember the song. Give me a break. The beautiful said the greatest thing that ever happened to him, and she's the best in thing. He'll bucket bucket. All these compliments set the music. You're the greatest girl. Boom boom, confetti and the flowers. There's a split on the ground. Comes up, hey, hey, hands her the gift, and she's like, "What?" And I said, "Yeah." And then we explained to her that the only reason, only reason we were together like that was to get her into this particular place at this particular time for this surprise, right? And then after the surprise, I was going to slob her down, which means kiss her on her, kiss on her, and I'd pick her up and walk out like that movie, right? And, then, and I will always love that kind of thing, right? And walk or, or an officer and, gen and a gentleman, whatever movie where the hero picks up the hot woman that's in love with him and he's in love with her, and they walk off the screen and the credits roll. It was going to be like that. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of dampened by the fact that if looks could kill, we would have been tortured and killed first. Because these looks were not just to kill. These looks were to torture and kill. <laughs> uh, thank God for the tap dancing guy being on time. Right? And of course, I take her out. We have a great time. She apologizes. And then I take her home and give her the business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the good, good business. <laughs> and she gave me the good, good business. She gave me the lady good, good business. And I gave her the man good, good business. <laughs> Little did I know that nine months later I'd find out, no, not what you're thinking. When I said nine months, no, she did not have a baby. I know where the condoms are. <laughs> Big drawer full of them when you're in a relationship. <laughs> and the pill. You're daggone right. So <clears throat> when I met was nine months later, I would find out that she was, um... How can I put this politely? Uh, horrible. 
<laughs> right? But that's what it's like, you know, that, that's why I could never cheat on someone. Because just a couple of minutes of that look on her face when she would let me explain that we were just trying to set up a nice surprise for her. That look alone made me go, oh, I could never do that. And I would never do that anyway. But I know what it's like to be a cheating person, even though I've never cheated in a relationship. I have, in fact, cheated on my, my one of my restaurants, and I have cheated on one of my exterminators back in the day. It was an embarrassing situation. You're in the supermarket. I'm in the supermarket buying some stuff. And as it turns out, one of the proprietors of my fav one of my favorite restaurants walks up to me. Hey, it's Anthony. Oh, hey. And he's going through all of this stuff. And it's not a big deal because it's just me and him there in the supermarket. Everybody looks around. Oh, two guys that know each other. We high five. We bro hug. We're talking. Hey, man, I wish you could come to the restaurant a little more because ever the bop bit the bit. And I'm going, yeah, well, I would come a little more, but I'm a little busy. Oh, yeah, I know you're doing the comedy and the thing. Okay, baby. Right. And the reason is that's part of the reasons why I'm not at his restaurant more. The other reason is there's another restaurant I like equally well that serves a different type of food. And I like that restaurant too. And I basically kind of cut the amount of time I go, I would spend at these local places and half, half time at one place, half the time at another place. They're far enough away, right? And I shouldn't feel guilty. Nobody expects you to go to just one restaurant at a time. But for some reason, the guys at each one of these restaurants became overly attached to me. I don't know why. Probably because of my incredible personality. <laughs> That's the truth. Shut up. Don't judge me. Back to the story. So the first one, hey, oh, hey, you should be here more, right? And I'm talking to him. Hey, you're the greatest restaurant. Yeah, ha, ha. And you give the compliment back. He says, I'm a great customer. Loves having me there, which is cool. I say he's a great restaurant. But yet, but and as it happens, behind me is the person who's the proprietor of the other restaurant. And I turn around, and I see him looking at me as if to say, you rotten boob, you dirty boob. And I go, hey, buddy. Uh -huh. so, that's, so that's why you're not always, that's why you're not at the restaurant as much as possible, right? Because of him, right? And I'm like, well, well, you just, I mean, I like, uh, I like Italian food. I like Chinese food. I like uh, uh, soul food. I like all different types of food, you know? So you two guys, you know, I kind of, you know, you, I like your, the food from your, both of your restaurants as well. Oh, so I noticed you mentioned a whole bunch of different other types of food. Have you been going to old restaurants as well, huh? Have you been hoeing it up, you food hoe? Hey, hey, what the food hoe stuff? Yeah, you food thought. What the hell? I don't even know you two old dudes knew words like that. <laughs> okay, they didn't actually say those words because back then those words hadn't been invented yet, but you get the point. And I felt bad, right? And they shouldn't have. I'm trying to explain to both of them, look, I like both of your restaurants. I want them to support both of your places. You know, I'm actually going out to restaurants more than I normally would just for the simple fact that I wanted to support both restaurants. And you would think that that would work out. But they both, they look like, like two, they look like side men or women to the person who has the money right but they, they, they're going look i don't want to lose this guy someone i have to begrudgingly put up with it you've seen that before where the lady's rich and she's got two guys that are fighting for him and neither one of them wants to let go and it's like i'd rather have a piece of her and be mad than none of her or a guy that has two ladies and then they're thinking i'd rather have a little bit of him than none at all but they begrudgingly do it and that's what these restaurant things were like I remember going into the restaurant. I walk in, the guy's happy to see me. Hey, oh, hey, hey, what's going on? I walk in the restaurant. Yeah, you want some food, right? What do you want, punk? Oh, what happened to hey? Was ho? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. What do you want? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it yourself. You know, I'm gonna go in the back with your plate, and you're gonna hear me going like this with my nose. But believe me, I'm not blowing my nose in your food. It's just a coincidence. All right. All right, so please order something with something that has sauces in it that are exactly the same color as mucus. Uh, no, you know, I gotta, I gotta go. Uh, I've changed my mind. I'll be back tomorrow, man. <laughs> I need to go to the other restaurant. Hope he's not, man. Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this isn't even the day you're coming. So you're going to come in with, 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 so you, would you do come from the other place, huh? The other place that I know you go. All right. What do you order this? Yeah, that, yeah I'm going to go in the back. You're going to hear me go. And it's, it's just, but I'm definitely not spitting in your food. So please order some food that has the same consistency and color as a big loogie. Um, you know what? I got to go. <laughs> Never went back to either place. <laughs> um, I'm actually on the other side of the country now. <laughs> Hope they don't franchise. <laughs> And you would think that embarrassment would be enough, but of course, no, it wasn't enough. No. 
have an exterminator that's good at one thing and one another exterminator that's good at something else. They have top ratings in one area and okay ratings in another area. So I figured since they, neither one of them charges too much, I'll just have them come at the, you know, and do their thing, man. They'll try to upsell me to the other service, but I'll go, no, nah, I'm okay, I'm okay, not a problem. That's what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, what I did not know was one of my neighbors who's across the street from me saw the service, knows that I'm very picky about what I who I allow in my house as far as service is concerned. Well, if he likes it, they must be good. So when I'm in the house, I say goodbye to the first guy, the original exterminator. She comes running across the street. Hey, you work for him? Yeah, he just signed the thing. Oh, well, if he, well, he, well, he, he always picks the best people. Let me get your phone number. And if you, you know, okay, great. So she picks up that guy, right? Which means he has to come back. And he, just, he, just, he comes back when I don't know he's going to be there. And the second exterminator who's good at the other thing shows up, right? And he does his thing. And I don't think anything of it. But as it turns out, as the second exterminator is, is, is showing up, the, the other one is showing up at the other house. And he's looking across. The, I don't see him at first, but I see the truck. And I'm going, you want to park around back? And he goes, no, nah, I'm going to leave right there. There's no parking place in the back. I'm like, okay. I'm trying to rush him out of the house. Oh, yeah, let me spray this and put that down and put that down. Hey, you got a little bit of hole there for the termite. Uh, they, they, you know, they, I'm going to put some, they put that little gel in there until, you, you know, which you clog up the hole until you can fix it. Right? So, you know, you have to, fixing it is your problem, but they put a little gel in there. You can either leave the gel there or fix the hole. I was going to fix the hole. Right, and he gets, he pulls out just in time for the original exterminator not to see him, which is fantastic and great, right? Exterminator sees me, hey, buddy, comes over to talk, right? And then I see we're talking, I'm trying to get him to, I'm trying to turn his body away because the gel is still in the in the hole, and, and exterminators know what that gel is. They use the same gel, it's a similar gel, so he's looking at it, and I see him catch the sight of the gel at the corner of his eye, and his demeanor changes. Hey, buddy, it's great coming here. How, how, how is that, man? It's kind of great. You haven't had bugs in your house in six years. You know, we tried to do our best for you. Then he, he catches the gel out the corner of his eye. Okay. So have you been having any problems, Mr. Thomas? Oh, no, you guys have been doing great. Yeah, really, been doing great. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hey, seems like you got a little patchwork down there over there. Yeah. Yeah, we use that kind of stuff, too. Man, I know construction worker guys don't use that kind of stuff. Uh, Did you put that there, Mr. Thomas? Oh, and... I put what where? I, I, I definitely don't see any gel from a competing company. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I gotta go, Mr. Thomas. We'll call you to reschedule, sir. He drives off mad, right? And I can't prove it, but all of a sudden I saw a bug in the house near the backyard. I was like, wait a second. You check your surveillance camera of your neighbors. You see the guy from the exterminated company with a bag of bugs dumping him in the backyard. You ain't fooling me, punk. Well, I just called to see if you have any bugs. I definitely didn't come jump your fence and dump a bunch of them in your house to teach you a lesson or anything like that. <laughs> you good guy, rotten scum. Okay, that part didn't happen, but you know what I'm saying. I just felt really, really bad. I felt like a cheating piece of crap. I felt like garbage because, like with the restaurant, I it, it shouldn't really matter that I have two restaurants that I go to, what difference does it make? They should be happy that I'm going to the restaurant, but I had built up kind of a relationship with both of them, and I felt bad. I'm even embarrassed that I'm talking about this, because this is a long, long time ago, because as it is now, I'd run into both restaurants. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man, hey, you guys up? I go to both of your restaurants, man. Your restaurant slams and your restaurant slams, all right? Cool. Y'all should get to know each other. All right, but that's me now, but back then, it was like, hey, hey, hey. Same thing with the exterminator. Hey, what do you do with that? Well, that exterminator has the top rating for when it comes to this, and you have the top rating when it comes to that, so I'm using you both. Well, why don't you use one of us? Hey, I've been using you, right? Yeah, be happy with that. Okay, take care of yourself. I ain't hiding crap at this point. Current me ain't hiding crap, right? But young me, 20s me, oh, God, I hope they don't know about each other, but that ain't me now, Jack. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Ah. <sighs> So I know what it feels like to feel like a cheater, even though I've never actually cheated on anybody, and I never will.
But if you're a business, that's a whole different story because I order a lot of stuff from Amazon when I decide to buy stuff. But I got news for you. I saw a couple of good deals at Walmart, and I, I'm talking to you, Amazon. Hey, I use you most of the time. But if I see something from Walmart that's a better deal, I'm going to use them. I'm not going to drop you, but I will use Walmart if I feel like it. I might even buy some stuff on eBay. Yeah, I said it. And I don't want to hear any crap from you. Just shut your mouth and keep annoying me to buy Prime. <laughs> All right, folks, that has been this episode of the S. Anthony Thomas Show. You didn't think I was just going to be doing all the interviews, did you? Of course not. It's going to be a whole lot of me uh, talking to you and the interviews. So the people that love this stuff where I'm talking to you like this, thank you. For the people that love the interviews, thank you. For the people that love the interviews and this stuff, much love to you all, and I will see you again next time.